Today I'm going to be reviewing the Rolleiflex 3.5e Xenotar, and I've only shot about two rolls on this, so I am calling it first rolls. This is not a true review, but it should come close enough. So I'm also going to offer comparisons to a couple other 6x6 medium format cameras, so specifically the Hasselblad 503CX and the so basically any 500 series Hasselblad because they're very very similar, uh, and the Mamiya 6 uh, rangefinder, which is a much more modern design, and also the Yashica Mat 124G, which is a similar TLR but quite a bit cheaper. And briefly, I'm going to talk a little bit about the camera. I'm not going to get into the history too deeply, just the mechanics of how it operates. Then I'm going to shoot some rolls and show you some footage and some examples. Third, I'll talk about the results a little bit technically, that is, how do the images look tonally, which is the most important part, and secondarily, how sharp is it, um, because I can't help myself. And then I'm going to offer some comparisons to some other cameras that I own or have used. So, the Rolleiflex 3.5e Xenotar is a twin lens reflex camera, meaning there is a viewing lens and a taking lens. So this lens takes the images, this is what actually matters. This lens just uh, shows you an image in the viewfinder. The viewfinder is big and beautiful, has a um, frame advance, very simple. It detects your film, which is really weird. Um, it just knows when to stop advancing. Shutter is dead quiet leaf shutter built into the lens. Will not shake your image at all, which is great. So I will wind it. There's no film in here and take a frame. Super quiet. Really nice. Not quite as satisfying as something with a big mirror in it to operate, though. Here's a Hasselblad 500 series. Um, listen to this. What a sound. Focusing the Rolleiflex 3.5 is pretty straightforward. Little focus scale here, operate it with your left hand. I got a little optimistic with this and didn't set it to focus far enough away, um, which unfortunately meant that some of my results came out sharp, but not super, super sharp. I would use a hyperfocal distance calculator on your phone, and if you're shooting at f11, for instance, I'd shoot at 5.6, basically go two stops um, more, two stops wider. Uh, and that'll give you some margin for error. This camera is surprisingly sharp for its age, uh, and so I would definitely err on the side of focusing farther away uh, when you're shooting landscape shots so you get that super crisp landscape image, even if the stuff up close isn't super, super sharp. And uh, in order to focus when you're not in a really long distance landscape situation, you literally just look through and focus. And when the image is in focus, it's in focus. And the taking lens is a 75mm Xenotar. Um, it is a f3.5, as the name would suggest. And uh, Xenotar is uh, Schneider Kreuznach's uh, planar lens uh, and performs very well comparably to the Zeiss planar. I saw some examples that I really liked that were shot on a Xenotar, so I irrationally held out for one. Um, I think the planar was there were more of those produced. And basically I bought this camera because I am a Diane Arbus fanboy. There's not that much more to it. I wanted to know what it was like to operate the camera because, I don't know, I guess I sort of mythologize uh, certain historically significant photographers that I uh, enjoy the work of and feel the work of. So by the way, you, I, you may have heard I said 3.5e, so the Rolleiflexes go through F. And I believe all the way back to maybe the C or the D, there are only very minor changes. Uh, for instance, I think the F can mount a, they call it a chimney prism, so a big prism, so the image isn't flipped left to right. If that's something you care about, for the most part, you can take your pick of any of them. They all have the same lenses and they all work basically the same. So because people who don't follow Rolleiflex super closely assume that F is the most the, the last and the best one. The Fs tend to be quite a bit more, uh, and the 2.8 series, which are quite a bit heavier and larger, also sell for a lot more. Handleability of it is great, uh, and it's a it's a really ergonomic setup. If you just hold, you know, your 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 right side operates the frame advance and the shutter, and your left side focuses, and it's extremely fast and easy to use. 
So since there's no mirror in here, uh, the image is going to be flipped from left to right. So when you move the camera to the left, your viewfinder moves to the right. That can be weird at first, but you get used to it very quickly. And another thing to mention, so as on almost all TLRs, stuff like the Mi C330, but as on almost all TLRs, the taking lens and the viewing lens are not interchangeable, so it's a fixed, like I said, 75 millimeter in full frame terms, just under a 50, so a normal lens, that is your only choice, so you better like it. There are also Rolle Wides and some other weird roll, roll eyes, but um, those are not as common and they're super expensive. By the way, if you're a Diane Arbus um, fanboy like I am, uh, she actually shot on a roll eye wide, but again, those are really expensive, so I did not buy one. And just a couple final things before we move on to the images. So this camera, I believe, was made in the 50s, early 60s. They went out of production, I believe, in the 60s. So they're quite old. Um, you'll definitely want to check the condition. They tend to be a bit beat up. Mine is not in perfect shape, but actually surprisingly good shape for one of these. Um, I would definitely also make sure that yours has been CLA'd recently, otherwise factor in a couple hundred dollars or so for a CLA. Um, it's not a, not a trivial expense on these, and they are not cheap, but they're not terrible. I see these going for anywhere between, call it like 600 and a thousand bucks on eBay. And lastly, one thing to recommend, either an SLR, um, a Hasselblad, something like that over this, is if you focus super close, this will focus down to, let's see, my focus scale is actually in feet, which is kind of wild, but a hair under three feet. There are also close-up lenses for these. If you need to focus closer than that, I believe they'll lose infinity focus. And if you shoot a lot of close-up, very detailed, um, like head and shoulders portraits, probably not the best choice of camera, in my opinion. In that case, I either get a studio-oriented camera, like a Mamiya RB67, RZ67, um, a Hasselblad, like I've mentioned a bunch of times, a Pentax 67, I believe, or 6x7 will focus closer, etc., etc. And now I'll show you some shots that I got in the field, focusing on the tonality. So looking at the images for tonality first, um, tonality of this tends to be a bit softer, not super contrasty. I think that's because of the single coated lens. I did use a hood to try to minimize flare, but you still get a bit of it. If you want that vintage old camera look with really good sharpness, I don't think you can beat this camera. Um, generally when you gain sharpness, you lose, you lose that vintage look you get contrast too. And this is a camera that's not very contrasty, but it's very sharp, which is a cool combination. Uh, and then and the sharpness images, I was only able to capture a couple here where I, you could really see the sharpness of the camera because I was over optimistic with the focus scale and didn't get things as, I didn't get as much depth of field as I thought I would. But I think in the couple I showed before, you can see the camera's really sharp. And if you wanted to better it in terms of sharpness, you'd need to step up to something like a Mamiya 6, Mamiya 7, like one of the very, very best 
cameras for sharpness. I will paste a link below or just look up Hevanet, H-E-V-A-N-E-T, medium format sharpness tests, and you'll see that some samples of this actually tested at the max their test could do, which is crazy for such an old camera. Finally, let's do some comparisons. I'm only going to compare to other 6x6 cameras today. I've posted a Mamiya 7 review where I say how much I love that camera, so not going to get into that again, but uh, let's compare it to some other 6x6 cameras. So maybe the most relevant comparison, this is the Yashka Mat 124G. Lovely camera. I believe this model is from the 70s or 80s. Works extremely similarly to the uh, Rolleiflex. The build is a hair worse, but fine. Also, I believe a single coated lens prone to flare definitely, definitely get a hood for it. Please get a hood for it or you'll get crazy flare um, more than the Rolly. Operates pretty much the same. A little bit less contrast with this, definitely less sharp. Still sharp enough, still a good camera. This is my wife's camera and I think she paid about 200-ish for a CL8 model, 230, 250, some, somewhere in there. Um, so very fairly priced. If you want to pay more for a nicer camera, get the Rolleye. Next up, I've mentioned this guy a fair bit. This is my um, Hasselblad 503CX. All the 500 models past the 500, so the 501, 503, whatever operate basically the same and I wouldn't worry too much about which one you get. I happened to have an opportunity to get this at a pretty competitive price a number of years ago. So advantages of the Hasselblad, there are lenses for this that will focus at one-to-one -one and be super sharp. There's a wider range of lenses and you can swap them out. You can opt for, so I have a prism on here so I don't have to worry about the left-right flip, but you can just get the simple pop-up. In any case though, it will be quite a bit heavier than the Rolleye, so if you want portability, go with the Rolleye. Um, I find this more satisfying to shoot. So again, Hasselblad has weird ergonomics, kind of like the Apple of the film camera world, where the ergonomics make a ton of sense, but they're very different from any other camera. Takes some getting used to. Loading film in this camera is a little bit weird the first couple times you do it. There's the flip left-right thing if you don't have a prism. Awesome camera, iconic, and highly recommended lens. Lenses in this tend to be a little bit less flare prone because they are, uh, if you get a later model multi-coated and comparable sharpness, the lenses for this are excellent. All made by Zeiss, I believe. Finally, slightly funky comparison as the Mimia 6. Uh, mine is a Mimia 6 MF. Really light, small. Cool thing about the Mimia 6 is the lens collapses into the body. So when you're going to shoot, you pull it out and that saves you a bit of space. This lens on here is the 50 3.5, 50f4, and this lens is wide in the sense that you get more up and down because it's a square crop, of course, and I find that really pleasant. It's about a 30 millimeter equivalent, super interesting lens. In comparison, I think the lenses for this are a hair sharper, maybe, definitely more contrasty. The camera itself is a bit lighter, just a hair, and maybe a hair smaller depending on how you consider size. Overall, the weight of those two cameras is super comparable when I just picked them up. Cost-wise, I do believe the Rolleye is quite a bit cheaper than the Mamiya 6, so that is a strong argument for it. And it's also a decent bit cheaper than the Hasselblad, so argument there as well. So overall, the Rolleye 3.5, um, really interesting camera. It's well put together. It feels like the tolerances are kind of just so, like it is this precisely built machine. It's not quite as overbuilt as a Hasselblad or a Leica. So for me, the main reason I shoot film is for the experience of shooting. I don't find it quite as satisfying to operate as a Hasselblad or actually as a Mamiya 7. There's something that I like about the frame advance on that camera, but still satisfying to operate. Small, light, super sharp, old school rendering with lower contrast if you like that. Not cheap, but not as exorbitantly expensive as a lot of medium format cameras are today. I think it's a really cool camera. Like I said earlier, I'm probably going to sell mine because I have too many cameras and it's just out of hand. I need to sell my Mimiya 6 probably, this Rolleye. So that is it for the video today. I hope that you enjoyed. I hope that this was informative or interesting or entertaining or some combination of the above. If you enjoyed, feel free to like and subscribe if you're into that sort of thing. Um, feel free to leave a comment below. I do respond to comments and I'm happy to talk cameras. I'm a camera nerd like you. I will talk to you later. Have a great day.